Mm -mm -mm. So when it's coming to my Steelers and um, some key points that I written down, because I'm, you know, I always do homework, right? I always got papers. <laughs> Y'all hear that? I always got papers. You know what I'm saying? Because I always, and the one thing I learned out here in that, and is that uh, um, you always want to make sure that you got something written down on paper. Do not trust electronics um, to the point where the batteries run out. You might forget a charger or something. Always have a backup. Have it printed out. Have your papers always printed out in advance just in case. Have a backup plan. Do not trust electronics. And it's probably not the electronics fault. It's probably your fault. You probably forgot that your laptop bag or something like that because I was in the middle of a show one time and I had everything pulled up. Or I had everything on a list, on a document. I had everything set up perfectly on my laptop. And in the middle of the show, my laptop decided to freeze. So now I didn't have my notes. So I said, and, it, and I always write things down anyway, but I said, you know what? I'm never going to do that again. I'm always going to write it down and always make my uh my backup plan. Always have writing everything down. And that way, once you put your papers up, you always got that information again. You don't have to go digging through it again sometimes you got an old school one is the old school way is a good way you always got your papers you put your papers up you always got that information those stats on those players all you got to do is just you know go through your pile and pick it out that's it that's it it's always there so it's just information all right when it comes to my Steelers though I'm getting to talk about my Steelers man um I I don't know what we're gonna do at the quarterback position we know we need corners. We keep saying we need corners. My brother, my little brother said we need a run stopping linebacker. Um, I believe that. I believe that that may help a whole lot. A whole lot. Um, isn't this because our defensive line is so good? They penetrate so good. You got that's the only way. And I do believe that, right? But we got Miles, we had Jack, we had Miles Jack out there. So you know, and and they play good, man. And uh, when we let Robert Spillane go, mistake, 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 mistake. He went to the Raiders and tore shit up. Spillane had been in that system, in that Pittsburgh system for so long. And he has done good. He has done good. And we let guys like him go, but then we keep guys around that's supposed to have stars, right? Because he came up from the bottom. He's been with the team, and he's been around the league for years, and he finally got up. And, look, he's doing this thing out there with the uh, uh, with the Las Vegas Raiders now. And I wouldn't leave Las Vegas to come back to Pittsburgh. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a star in Vegas right now. He's definitely a key piece of that defense now. Big ups to Spillane out there doing his thing. I got to say that. Um, but. You always can use upgrades at the positions. The biggest position that everybody's talking about with the Steelers and the papers all around the news world, nobody's saying that we need cornerbacks. That is us as fans saying that we need corners because of the big plays that we're letting up, right? And they're young. I want to say that. They're young. Everybody's not Patrick Peterson. Peter, Patrick Peterson is missing a step. He's getting up there. He's still in incredible shape. His, his smarts is unreal. I think Patrick P should be moving back, playing safety, roving back there a little bit. I just think so. I honestly think that he should be on the other side of Mike Mika Fitzpatrick back there, deep balling. You know what I'm saying? Reading that and just back there playing center field, picking everything off. But hey, look. That's just me wishful thinking in a way I think optimistic outside of the box, right? That's just how I give it up. But you get to talking about Kenny Pickett. Omar Khan, our new GM, was said that he's excited about seeing what Kenny Pickett's going to do this year and coming back from an ankle injury. Let's not forget about the concussions that he had. Can't stay healthy. Um. I'm, I might be able to just say, look, I got to get a guy a shot, right? We got to give Kenny Pickett a shot. We have. We're average at best with Kenny Pickett, y'all. He makes us an average football team. I don't know how he'll do in the Arthur Smith system. 
But Arthur Smith has had a Kenny Pickett type, Ryan Tannehill, right? Some people say that Kenny Pickett reminds them of Kirk Cousins. And in which case, Kirk Cousins is Kenny Pickett at best. That's the best that Kenny Pickett's getting. And this is by the pros. And the one pro that I listen to about quarterbacks, believe it or not, is Merrill Hodge. He has not missed on any of his ta- on any of his takes when it comes to these quarterbacks. Merrill Hodge is not sold on Kenny Pickett. We have seen his ceiling. We have seen Kenny Pickett at his best, believe it or not, in our offense, y'all. We have seen it. A new coordinator brings new plays. We've seen how Kenny's going to play. We've seen it. Um, you cannot expect him to be any better if we're not going to upgrade the offensive line. We have to get an elite offensive line in order for Kenny to do it. And if the locker room, the, the locker room is not around Kenny, y'all, and, and that's a problem. We could, as fans, you can be a Kenny Pickett fan all the way you want it to be. You can have wishful thinking. You can pull up stats. You can come up with any excuse that you want to. But what we tend to do in quarterbacks lead teams, he has the most power on that offense to say who's there and who goes. If we let George Pickens go, we would be, that would be a stupid choice. That would be a stupid choice. If they're at practice running these plays and they get in the game and Kenny can't hit Pickens, you will get frustrated. Y'all practice together all throughout the week. He gets in the game. He starts seeing ghosts. He is an average quarterback. I cannot explain this to y'all anymore. Like this is really annoying. The fact that we think that he's going to give us something different outside of what he's already given us. It's not going to get any better with him. Unless we just go, we, we, I mean, unless we're going to start paying guys. If we're not going to start paying guys coming in and paying offensive linemen top dollar and our receiver top dollar type money and go and get the best guy out there, Tyreek Hill type guy, y'all listen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You we can you can't have your cake and eat it too, especially in not today's NFL. He's an average quarterback, and everybody else around him gets the blame for his average play. Then, um, and now you get to look in that guys right, and and I'm a, I'm gonna get off of him for a little bit because it's it's kind of frustrating to keep seeing how. And hearing that we're going to stick with him. And Chicago does not want their quarterback in Justin Fields. And how we have not made a strong move for Justin Fields. If you spend a first round pick on Kenny Pickett. Justin Justin Fields, you have not seen his ceiling at all. At all. We have not seen his ceiling in the NFL. And that's why you have a lot of pros saying out there. And guys who evaluate the pros saying that build around Justin Fields. I even said that in in my mock draft. I did a mock draft. Me and Shad both did a mock draft together. And we both said the Bears need to keep Justin Fields, draft Marvin Harrison with the first overall pick, with the number nine pick, go back and grab another receiver. They should stay and build around Fields. But the fact of the matter is they're going to go quarterback because of the talk about Caleb Williams. They're going to go quarterback. They're going to take either Drake May, uh, Jaden Daniels, or Caleb Williams. They're going to go quarterback in Chicago. We know that they're sold on that. They believe that. I'm telling you, how can we not push for a guy that you, he's he's just he's got a bad rep in the NFL. He's been under so many different coordinators. Pittsburgh, I'm telling you, is the ideal place for Justin Fields. I'm telling y'all, and I I will bring it up. I'm so petty with this, that the fact if if he comes to Pittsburgh and we start winning and going crazy and he brings back that championship field back to Pittsburgh and we pushing late and deep rounds in the playoffs, we're going to get a couple Super Bowls out of Justin Fields, if not more. If not more, I, I'm telling you, I, he's that he's that guy for us, yo. 
the the our, the stability in our the stability that Pittsburgh Steelers brings, you're comfortable. If you go to Pittsburgh as a professional football player and you perform to your highest ability and you give us everything you got, you go to work with your hard hat on, lunch pail in hand, and you get up every day on time. And when it comes time to show up on that field and you are producing, Pittsburgh will pay you. We will love you forever. Our fans will. We will support you 100%. We are not the kind that, that I'm telling you it happens. I've seen it since I was little. That is the kind of franchise the Pittsburgh Steelers is. We do not give up on you shit. We don't we don't care how old you get. You're still producing. We're still going to keep you. We're going to continue paying you. That's just how Pittsburgh's always been. If you're one of them guys that's coming in and you want the bag and you want to keep complaining about money, but you ain't producing and that's that's the Pittsburgh. We ain't the franchise for you. That ain't us. We'll pay you, but you got to earn that. You got to earn that on and off the field, on and off the field. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. Pickens, is, he's a young guy. He made a little mistake getting frustrated with his quarterback, but y'all got to see it that way too. He's the quarterback is just, he's, he's young. I mean, look, he, he's not it, but anyhow, we will pay you, but going after fails is that's, that's the ideal fit. I don't understand why we're not, but we're entertaining other ideas. He said we might be going into the draft. I but I want to talk about Kirk Cousins. Um, Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. No doubt he can give us a push, but I don't like that. I don't like the fit. I don't like the fit. We need a dual threat. That's the way that NFL is going. Um, Patrick Mahomes is a dual threat. I don't care what nobody says out there. He is a dual threat quarterback. He will kill you on his legs, but he is a pass first. You got to have somebody that can run, and that is athletic in the NFL in order to win today. You're not going to get somebody with a statue in the NFL, and you got a defensive coordinator like Spagnola. You're just sitting back there. Uh, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work with these great defensive coordinators in the NFL nowadays. You're not going to win with a statue quarterback. We, we've seen it for the past couple of seasons. We've seen it. We've seen that, that they'll get you to the dance. But when it comes down to it, when you got an elite defense going against them, it, it, they're too easy to get to. You got to get you somebody that can move around, manipulate the pocket at best. He can't do that. Our quarterback right now can't do that. Anyhow, um, and that's what Kirk Cousins. I like him, but he got to he got to get a little faster, and he's getting up there. Russell Wilson, he can move around in the in in the pocket and stuff like that. He's a dual threat quarterback, right? But Russell Wilson is not that. He's not that dude, man. Russell Wilson is not the guy, man. Because of the money, because of the money, the money alone is why Kirk is why I will not go after Russell Wilson. And that is why I thought the Denver Broncos kind of made a mistake there going after him. But I, I just don't see us grabbing him. That's too much money for him. Too much money. So Russell Wilson is out of that's out of the out of the question. I'm not I'm not putting all that money up for Russell, Russell Wilson. If you if somebody's gonna pay Russell Wilson the remaining of his contract, he's gonna have to restructure that. Because any team in the NFL that pays Russell Wilson that much money. For him, he better come in and produce a Super Bowl. There's nothing else that matters. I'm sorry. There's nothing else that matters. And I'm talking for every, all 32 teams out there, anybody that might need a quarterback right now in the NFL. If Russell Wilson goes to your franchise, he better give you a Super Bowl if y'all are going to pay him that money. That's it. There's nothing else that he can do. That's all I got to say about Russell Wilson. Now, one name that came up to me, and it's going to shock y'all about how I'm going to talk about him, J.J. McCarthy coming to the Pittsburgh Steelers under uh, Arthur Smith uh, offense, right? J.J. McCarthy, I'm going to make a good argument for him real quick because he has not had to show his true ability in Michigan, right? He just hasn't. So really, it's a question mark on him. It's a question mark on him. Why? <clears throat> he always had elite running, always had a great defense. He has not had to play a lot. He is very mobile. I like that. 
He's very mobile. Nice size. And to me, he's better than Pickett. J.J. McCarthy is better than Pickett. Do I think J.J. McCarthy would be there? Absolutely. Do I think he's another Kenny Pickett? No. I do not think so. Um, and then think about this, too, with, J, with J.J. McCarthy for one second. Where he has not had a Malik Neighbors. He has not had a Marvin Harrison. He has not had an Xavier Worthy. He has not had a Deontay Johnson. He has not had a George Pickens. He has not had a fire move. He has not had a Darnell Washington. He has not had a Connor Hayward. He has not had the uh, uh, Calvin Austin. He don't have those kind of way. He didn't have those kind of weapons over there in Michigan. Now, could you question some of his throws? Well, could you, you could question a lot of Kenny's throws, but I don't think that happens. I don't think that happens. He's a sleeper out there. I'm telling y'all, J.J. McCarthy is a sleeper. We seen his athletic ability in which he did not show a lot of all the time. He did not run all the time. And J.J. McCarthy got some gears. He got some gears. I'm telling you, he'll drop gears on you. He will go. He got wheels. The guy got wheels, man. And I'm, and I'm just being honest about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I like J.J. McCarthy. He and, and if you look at his film, um, in some of those situations, he manipulates the pocket. I, I really like J.J. McCarthy coming to the Pittsburgh Steelers. If we cannot get Justin Fields, I want to go after J.J. McCarthy from the uh, Michigan Wolverines. I really do, man. Um, I think he 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 might he may be it. Now, right now, no, I don't think right now he'll be. But um, you know, give him a couple, you know, couple years, and he'll be there. You know what I'm saying? I believe Kenny had his couple of years. We've seen, his, we seen him. He's been hurt a lot. I think McCarthy's tougher. I think McCarthy's a winner. Obviously, he is. Um, And he's not going to be one of the first quarterbacks. He'll be there late first round, early second round. He will be there. J.J. McCarthy will be there for us to pick Um, unless somebody else sees what I see in him. And they take them before then over somebody else because you don't know what you're going to get up out of them. But at the pro level, I think that he's ready Um, because you sometimes you see these quarterbacks who win Heisman's and go into the NFL and they're not that good. Right. But then sometimes you see these guys who just come out of nowhere. Let's say Mr. Irrelevant, for example, because he's in Super Bowls. He's been in two of them already. So we got I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Got to watch out for that. And I think J.J. McCarthy may be the biggest sleeper quarterback out there that has the size, the speed, and I think he would fit perfect with our franchise. I think that might be something we may that that's that may be real to go after J.J. McCarthy. I like him. All right. Um, just a quick rundown for everybody who uh, missed it. I talked about the Bills. And um, I think they need either. I think they need a receiver. Zay Weaver from uh, Colorado Buffaloes. He'll be perfect. And I'll talk about that in a minute here. Again, the Eagles, y'all can rewind it. Y'all can go to the beginning about that because I believe I dropped some uh, nice conversation at the beginning of that. So y'all having y'all coffee. I'm going to sip my coffee before we move on to the next segment here. Cheers to y'all out there. The morning after, no plan B, baby. <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving. 